better reporting from multi-company systems. If you're watching this webinar, that's probably you are here today. Uh, typically, when tr companies are trying to do better reporting from consolidation, from multi-company consolidation purposes, uh, they're trying to get better, you know, or easier financials, uh, maybe sales analysis, analysis of inventory. Maybe a main challenge is distributing information to to the companies, to the individuals at the corporate level in a secured manner. Or maybe even is trying to blend more data, you know, not only the multi-company, but maybe people have other data silos, maybe the CRM system, maybe payroll, and those things can be complicated. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Johnny Girardi. I'm DataSelf founder and CEO, and today this webinar is about data self-analytics uh, powered by Tableau and using for multi-company consolidation. So what we're going to be talking here today. So first of all, uh, I want to be sure to cover some reporting concepts to explain how and why uh, data consolidation can be a challenge and how it can be addressed from a generic standpoint. So just generic concepts about that. Then I want to cover how data self can add value to the process. I'll do a demo. Uh, at the end, we'll have a Q&A. Sorry, it's misspelled here. And throughout the presentation, I'll do quick three, uh, three quick surveys to get your input about the content and how well we're doing. So let's get the ball rolling. So first of all, just talking about any reporting process. How does it work? So the first part of any reporting process, you know, when you ask for a new report, uh, one of the most important parts is what is called data preparation. Data preparation means you need, or someone that knows the data source, your ERP system, your CRM, whatever the data source is, someone that knows this data source a lot, has, this person has to find what tables have the right data. Usually there are several tables. They need to link the tables together and apply rules to get the right data set for your reporting. This task is usually highly technical, and people doing it are usually have, they have extensive knowledge of the data source, so usually very uh, technical people. The second part of the, 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 the job is, well, now that I have the data that I need for the report, I need to actually present the data in a way that will make sense for the decision maker. So let's say if you're looking at a, I don't know, a sales report to show uh, year-to-date growth sales from last year, well, I need to organize the data showing sales, let's say, by customer, this year-to-date, last year-to-date, and show growth. So now you're just preparing the data to show in the proper format. Maybe you want to put, you know, tabular with rows and columns. Maybe you need to put on a chart. This job usually is by far not as technical as the first one, but depending on the tool you're using, can be very technical. So many companies require consultants to do the data preparation in the, in the data presentation. The last part is, hey, now that this report is ready, uh, you know, the person who built it need, needs to give to other people, distribute by email, PDF, Excel file, maybe to mobile devices, maybe mail <laughs> the report, you name it. So data distribution is also another part of the process. Most companies today, they do this, this job through a, a, an expert, a consultant, or maybe a few people that are highly trained and usually is a probably time-consuming job. Well, this is for any report, even from single company. Now, if you look in a multi-company framework that you need to do consolidation of reports coming from every single company, then you got to do this over and over. So every individual, individual company, like company one, has to do their own data preparation, data presentation, data distribution. Company do this, the same thing. And if you have 10 companies, all of these companies have to do the job, you know, all the, the cycle over and over. Once all of these reports have been properly done by the, these companies, usually they have to be sent 
to someone at the corporate level. And this person will have to take every single report, usually manually with copy and paste in Excel or not, and do again a data preparation from all of these individual reports. So a lot of data massage. Eventually, when the data has been combined the right way, then they format the data in a certain way to show the multi-company reporting. And, if, and eventually, they do the data distribution. Sometimes the data distribution is only at the headquarters level. Sometimes they send some reports back to the individual companies. Again, it's fairly time consuming, and sometimes uh, there are issues. So when you go for a multi-company reporting consolidation, some of the co common challenges is, well, is a very labor-intensive process. Uh, every single company and corporate will spend hours, hours, sometimes even weeks to get the reports together. The other thing is, because quite often is a, lay, is a manual process, it's error prone. It is hard to keep track of, you know, issues. So sometimes a lot of issues with that. The other thing is, if you have a lot of companies and or a lot of data, these reports can run very slowly, so poor performance. And finally, user access. Once the reports are ready, sometimes the only way to access the reports is by email. If people need to change the reports, it's almost impossible. And sometimes having access anytime, anywhere, using things like mobile devices is just not there. So these are some of the common challenges when it comes to multi-company reporting consolidation. So now before we move to the next slide, I would like to quickly uh, ask uh, you to respond. What are your main, what are your multi-company reporting challenges? So I'm gonna uh, launch here quickly a poll to ask you that question. If you can please uh, select um, all the options that apply to you. Uh, the first one here is difficult to use or labor intensive. If it's so, check the box. And by the way, I just uh, made a mistake and you can only choose one option. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so the options are difficult to use, labor intensive, poor performance, lack of access anytime, anywhere, and lack of data silos consolidation. I'm sorry that you know I uh, incorrectly uh, build this uh, poll to only choose one option. So choose the most important option and please click uh, submit. I'm going to give you another minute for you to finish. And I'm going to also change something here. So the next one, we don't have the same issue. Five more seconds. All right, I'm going to close the poll. Thank you for, for voting. And let me share it. Uh, so the results, pretty much we got uh, most people voting for difficult to use and labor intensive, and a few people uh, chose others. Okay, thank you very much. Let's move on. Um, so here is a way that typically how you can make this process of, of uh, company consolidation much better way, way better. So this is a generic concept. How can you automate as much as possible of this process? So here on the far left, I show different company databases. Company one, company two, and we have many companies. Five, 10, 20, 50, doesn't matter, many companies. So typically one way to solve this problem is using a data warehouse for the data preparation process. So data preparation, as I mentioned before, is a very technical job. With a data warehouse, it's gonna be even more technical. Yes, it's gonna be even more technical. However, the big benefit is when you use the proper data warehouse framework, these more technical people will be able to map all of your different source databases, all of your different companies, and they can blend the data together the right way the way that your business needs need, and this is a kind of you know a kind of a programming approach that once you do that and you do it properly, 
it becomes completely automated. So all the data from all companies come together the right way. It takes some time to set it up, but once you do it, all the error-prone, labor-intensive, potentially slow process becomes completely automated, and it can be done every night. So the data preparation is always consolidated, and you're doing your analysis, the data is always there ready for you to pull the data out of the data warehouse. So a data warehouse is typically the most efficient and automated way to tackle data preparation from multi-company uh, 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 systems. Once the data has been properly merged together, consolidated together, then you need to give the data to, to users and distribute it to, to users. Well, typically there's so many offers out there to do the data presentation and distribution. Uh, my recommendation is try to find the solution that provides the most automated process of, uh, you know, the presentation of your reports and distribution, and most importantly, the easiest to use. When it comes to give reports to your decision makers, the easier it is to use, the more likely the decision makers will become empowered by the tool and they'll be able to access the reports anytime, anywhere, using whatever they like, desktop, web, mobile devices. They will be able to slice and dice the data. They'll be able to drill down, to download data, and even create new reports. So the easier to use, the most important, because at the end of the day, decision makers need to make decisions all the time, and they need to change the reports. They need to modify the reports. So that's my main recommendation to automate this process. Now, some additional ideas here. Data warehousing. Many companies do data warehousing. Sometimes they use Access or they use SQL Server, which is the most common ways that we find to be the market for data warehousing, Access databases and SQL Server. So my recommendation is find something that is easy to, main, easy to deploy and easy to maintain. Keep in mind that in a few years, you may be upgrading your data sources, your ERP systems, or maybe you have different ERP systems. So if this data warehouse framework is not really easy to maintain, you may have to hire new people or different people to do the job, and that be, may become a whole new project. So easy to maintain is critical for your data warehouse. Second is it must be high performance. It must allow to crunch the data quickly. It must allow the reporting tool to pull data out of it very fast. So typically, use something like SQL Server or not to help you with the performance of the, the, the system. And very importantly, as I mentioned, the whole process must be as much automated as, as possible. Data Warehouse does not replace human intelligence. It does not. Thank, thankfully, we need humans. But it should be able to replicate automatically all the, the repetitive tasks. So it must be automated. On the data presentation, as I mentioned before, ease of use is the most critical uh, component. The second is easy access. You know, people like to access their data in different ways. Maybe they're on their desktop, again, maybe on a web browser, maybe on a mobile device, maybe they want to receive on their inbox reports on a schedule basis. So find a platform that provides you with all of those options, easy access. In the last one, again, high performance. I mean, nowadays, people have no patience whatsoever. And if you can invest a little bit more money to run your reports in seconds, to give your decision makers information in seconds instead of, you know, minutes and hours, it's usually worth it. So look for that. So these are uh, generic concepts about um, automating multi-company uh, systems. Now, there are so many possibilities when you use data warehousing in the right analytics solution. Like in this case, this could be a franchiser business where some businesses or some companies are single-owned, while some of others are, you know, a single owner owns several locations. In this case, I'm showing company one is single-owned and 203N is the same owner for all locations. So when you have a data warehousing uh, framework, you can have a data warehouse for one of the locations, 
with its own analytics platform. Then you can have a data warehouse for the other locations that belong to the same owner with its own analytics platform. But then corporate may want to have their own data warehouse that consolidates all the data from all individual companies with its own analytics platform. So when you have this kind of framework, as you learn about, the about your needs, you can use the right framework to tackle security, data distribution, data preparation the right way. Alrighty, when you do that, you pretty much automate the whole process. It's high performance, things will run super quick, uh, super quick and uh, users will have access to their data in a secure fashion anytime, anywhere. So there was a little concept uh, overall for all, all um, multi-company uh, reporting um, needs. How do we do it? Uh, what value we add? So now I'm going to be talking about data self approach. I'm the company owner and, and, and founder. When I founded data self uh, 10 years ago, my main uh, vision for the business was, well, companies in the mid-market that are using products like you know, Sage, Microsoft, Infor, Salesforce, and whatnot, their decision-making process is very critical. But the tools available for reporting are usually not so sophisticated. They are mid-market and expensive, but they're not like data warehouse-based. They're not the best of the breed. So the vision was very simple. Uh, with my team, I want to go to the Fortune 2000 world, find the best of the breed reporting tools that can fit the needs in the budget of mid-market companies. I want to make this solution simple. I want to make the solution better for mid-sized companies. I want to make them affordable. And that's pretty much about it. So what we bring to you is the best of the breed work for you. That's what we do. The best technology made it simple. What do we have today is pretty much a Tableau and SQL Server. And soon I'll talk more about these two upper market vendors. And then we add our own secret sauce that simplifies significantly these two upper market technologies, and we add a lot of reports out of the box to make the platform not only the best of the breed, but with a solid foundation for your reporting needs with a ton of reports. So what about Tableau and Microsoft? Well, Gartner is one of the most reputable companies doing technology assessment for Fortune 2000, and they just released Every year in February, they release their assessment of how these Fortune 2000 uh, companies are doing when it comes to BI and analytics platform. Making a long story short, Tableau and Microsoft have been the leaders, have been leaders in the Garden Magic Quadrant for many, many years. And that's what we're bringing to, for, to, 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 to the mid-market is the leading um, uh, BI and analytics platforms for small and medium-sized businesses. So when we look at our, our technology, you know, we do use a data warehouse for data preparation. And the way we, we use this, we use SQL Server. And SQL Server, you know, as I showed before in the prior slide, is one of the most reputable um, platforms for data warehousing, even the Fortune 2000 world. So we bring it to, to you. However, unlike our competitors that use programming for SQL Server, and competitors using programming means it's complicated, it's time consuming to deploy and to maintain. So let's say if in a few years you need to do some heavy duty maintenance because you upgrade your ERP and CRM system, good luck, it's gonna take a lot, of, a lot of work. We don't do that. Yes, we use SQL Server, yes we do, but we have our own ETL tool, ETL means extraction, transformation, and loading that sits on top of SQL Server and makes the deployment and maintenance of the data warehouse much easier, much simpler, and almost code-free. So easier to deploy, easier to maintain, even when you upgrade your data sources. On the data presentation side, we use Tableau, 
which for the past 40 years has been considered by Gartner as the gold standard for analytics platform, ease of use, data discovery, dashboarding for Fortune 2000. So we're bringing this outstanding analytics platform and making it easy for you to take advantage of. Not only that, but my team, we've been working together for 16 years. And in these 16 years, we have learned how mid-sized companies uh, reporting needs are for multi-company frameworks. And then every time we see companies using our technology for some kind of report that could be beneficial for all our clients, we build that into our out-of-the-box solution. And today we have more than 5,000 reports available out-of-the-box. So that's what we do. <clears throat> we make best of the breed technology easy, affordable, with a ton of reports as a starting point. Uh, let me tell you a, a little, little bit more uh, from a technical standpoint, an example of data consolidation at a table level. Let's talk about, let's say, GL consolidation. So in this example, I'm showing three lines. For every line of this uh, table, I have a different company database, ERP1, ERP2, ERP3, and I'm taking <clears throat> their GL detail posting table and bringing them together into the data warehouse. And I'm adding a new, we call table ID. So for the first company, we're gonna call CO1 as company one, company two, company three. And we do this data consolidation in the ETL. All the individual tables, they go into a target table in the data warehouse with all the data together. How does it look at the end of the day once we have this mapping? Well, when you look at this table in the data warehouse, it will have all the records from each individual company. So company two records, company one records, company three, company one, all them together. So now when I need to do reporting across all companies, all the data have been merged at the table level. And when I'm spinning reports, they're all there. I can filter by one company, two companies, all companies of group of companies. So that's how the, you know, the basic concept of how the data warehouse can make reporting of multi-company so much faster, so much easier once the plumbing, the data has been put together. Now, when you're build, building reports, a lot of the reports that you need, they are rows and columns, just like you know, Excel sheets uh, or kind of crystal reporting services. And when you pull this data using these reporting tools out of the data warehouse that has been consolidated the data, it's easy, it's fast, and all the data is there. And again, you can filter by individual companies, group of companies, or all companies to have different perspectives of your multi-company system. Now, let me talk about Tableau that I mentioned before. Tableau is the analytic solution that we have selected five years ago. And one of the things I love the most about Tableau is because unlike their competitors, you know, most of the competing offers out there, people who designed the product, they were most, mostly geeks, software engineers that came up with uh, flashy ways to show data visualization techniques. But when you are trying to get insights out of your data, you don't want flashy. You want to get it, you want to understand what that data is trying to tell you. And Tableau has been pretty much the only vendor that has hired psychologists and graphic designers to help understand how people look at data and have insights from it. And then they created a software engine that helps decision makers to get it, to see things quickly and get what what's important. Not because it's beautiful, because it's flashy, because it's, it's insightful. So let me show some of the ideas of how Tableau works, what the concept behind it. How about this? Do you need to think, what should I do? As humans, if we get in front of this, we don't think, we just jump out of here. You know, We have evolved to react quickly to visual cues. And if we didn't have this kind of you know, perception, we probably would have not survived as a species. 
of course, is a little extreme example as a snake, but that's what Tableau tries to do, is quickly give you insight to make a decision and move forward. Let me show some examples of how Tableau makes it simple. Suppose this is my problem. I need to find how many nines are in this table. Good luck. It's going to take me a long time if I'm not a gifted person that can tell us just by looking at numbers. Most of us, it will take many minutes to figure out how many nines. With Tableau, that's it. Now I take a quick look. In a few seconds, I'm going to say it's about 10. Simple, beautiful, insightful. I got it. I move on. How about this? Again, if I try to see the trends, which of these territories are, are selling the most, which of these products are not so profitable, is going to take me a while, probably several minutes, maybe half an hour to come with a conclusion. Because, you know, we humans are not designed to digest information quickly. With Tableau, this information can be showed like this. Now, big bars are bigger sales, so I can quickly tell that this territory is doing really well because the totals are pretty big. From a profitability, if it's red, it's losing money, I can quickly tell it apart. I mean, something would take me, may, maybe take me 15, 20 minutes. Now, in a minute or so, I get it. That's what the blood does really well, is give you insights quickly. Now, it's not about being fluffy or being flashy, it's about being insightful. Let me show another example. 3D pie charts, beautiful. Are they insightful? Uh, they can be deceiving. Which slices are bigger here? Not so clear. Now, if you put in, t in, in, in 2D, now it's clear which slices are bigger. Tableau makes it harder for people to build 3D pie charts because they are deceiving. People should use 2D pie charts because they're insightful, beautiful and insightful. So Tableau excels at come up with techniques to quickly help people get it, have insights from your data. All right, let me make the quick uh, another poll, uh, and then we're going to go into the product presentation. So if you don't mind, uh, answer the next uh, poll. And in this case, you can choose all options. Um, what are your main reporting areas? You can choose you know, CRM, financials, whatever you want. Just pick the, your, all the choices that you want and click Submit, please. Be sure to, to click Submit. Ten more seconds. All right, thank you. Let me share it. So we have a uh, few people, uh, CRM, everyone with financials, a lot of people with uh, inventory, uh, a lot of people with sales and other. Okay, really appreciate it. Let's move on. Uh, product demo, finally. Sorry about so much PowerPoint. Uh, so what I'm going to show you now is a little uh, real case scenario of one of our clients that has a multi-company system, and every month the CEO has to show to the board some data. One of the data was this month's sales by individual company. The other was, well, they, they have marketing in their website, and they need to compare website visitors from Google Analytics with their sales and see trends to see if they're affecting each other. The other is regional sales by deal size. So they want to see sales in the U.S. and see how big the, the, the sales are by state. They want to see a quick uh, summarized income statement and some other simple reports. So let's go for it. So right now I switched to Data Self Analytics desktop. Um, and most of the things I'm going to be showing you using the desktop client can also be done using web and mobile devices. So overall, it works the same way. In mobile device, I'll be using my finger instead of my mouse. And when you go here, you have several connectors that are pulling data from the data warehouse. So all the data preparation has already been done by the tech technical people 
now as a business person, I come here and I can pick what connector I want to work with and I just do my job. So the, the CEO has to build the first few reports which are revenues oriented. Uh, the first one was looking at sales by company and he also wanted to break down uh, by product, by invoice number and whatnot because we're going to be analyzing the data with the board every month. So how do we do it? So here I'm looking at the revenues connector and I have customer information, invoice information, product, salesperson, whatnot. These are the numbers that, I'm, that I want to analyze. Well, things become pretty much a drag and drop framework. So if I want to see sales by company, I drag company to my report. So these are the four companies that I have in my multi-company system. I want to see sales, so I just drag sales to my report. So right now I'm seeing sales by company, the whole company history. Well, I just want to see this month's sales. So let me drag the invoice date to my column. Right now I see the breakdown by year, which is my sample database only has four years. Well, I want to see by month. So let me expand year, and now I'm seeing quarters. Let me expand quarter, and I'm seeing months. I could expand to days. I could expand to weeks, fiscal period, whatever uh, time buckets, buckets you have, I can expand into them once the data has been properly prepared in the data warehouse. Okay, beautiful. Now I have all my, my history here by month. Well, I want to see this month sales because it's my m monthly meeting. Well, let me drag and drop the invoice date into my filters shelf. And then I'm going to select, you know, I could select different time, time, type, uh, uh, time buckets. I'm going to choose rel relative date. And then I'm going to choose among the buckets month and this month. And click OK. And voila, that's my report. So this month sales by company. In, 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 in the board meetings, the CEO sometimes has to answer, what about last month, last year, last quarter? Now that the report is being built, I can come here and say previous month, there it is, maybe the last four months or two months or whatever. So very easy to change the report once you have the report prepared. Now typically the, the, the CEO had to show sales by company, by customer, by product and invoice information. It's all drag and drop. If I want to see customer information, I go to customers and I drag customer let's say, between the company and the sales. So now by customer, by com I'm sorry, by company, by customer, all the data is here. I want to see product information, no problem. I go to product and I just drag and drop. Let's put after customer. So by company, by customer, by product. And I want to see voice information, again, drag and drop. Very intuitive, very simple. Anyone can do this with little training. Let me drag and drop maybe between the customer and the product. And there it is. Many of our clients have learned how to build reports like this just by watching a presentation like this. It's drag and drop. It's fairly straightforward. And this is all dynamic. Maybe I want to put my company uh, as my uh, columns instead. So now what, what I have is I'm looking the report by customer, invoice, product, and companies at the top. Or maybe I want to put my companies uh, in my rows. You just drag and drop and you change the order of your report. Very straightforward. All right, that was my first report, uh, this month's sales details, marketing sales trends. Now I need to, another report. In this report, they needed to show sales coming from the ERP systems crossing with website visitors from their website. Now the IT worked with our team to consolidate the two data silos into a single data source. That was done in the data warehouse. It was technical. It, was, it took some, some time, but once it was done, 
Now we have website visitors as part of my revenue connector. Now with this information, the CEO just spin the data. Well, he needs to see sales, need to break down by invoice date, and he needed to see on a monthly basis. So right now I'm looking at sales on a monthly basis in my whole company history. Well, I want to combine with website visitors from Google Analytics. Drag and drop. These are website visitors. Let's make bars. And the bottom is sales. Let's put them on a dual axis so it's easier to compare. And that's it. It took a few minutes for the CEO being able to, to combine this data all from all companies. Let me show you here. I have all the companies here and seeing how things are going. Oh, maybe I don't want to see ABC company. Maybe I don't want to see XYZ company. So you can pick and choose and see the effect of the multi-company data combined with Google Analytics data, completely different data silos. So that was the second report. The third is sales by state. So let me go here and quickly build this one. I want to see sales by state invoice size and sales. Just pick those fields and put on a map. Let's make it a little bigger. Oops, bigger. Let's make it centered. Let's make it a little bigger. And that's it. Uh, some financials. I have already information fairly prepared. So this is a, a subsection of the financials consolidated for all companies. All the data is here. Hey, I want to break down by company drag and drop, put my companies in my columns. So by company ID, I have the financials. Or maybe I want to put the company ID in my rows. So for every section, I have the, the, the individual companies. Or maybe I want to see companies, for every company, their own financials. Drag and drop, point and click, and you get the report. Now assume that I want to have these four reports together in a dashboard. That's quick and easy. We create a new dashboard, and I want to put the map at the top. I want to put the trend analysis at the bottom. It's all drag and drop, point and click. Business people can do this. They do not need a technical person to build these things for them. And that's what I meant at the beginning. You need to come up with an analytics platform that is really easy to use. If you can get your business people to become more self-sufficient, boy, they're going to be more productive. And that's the goal, is to give them a tool. They can anytime, anywhere access these reports, slice and dice them, and even create new ones from scratch. Now, how typically people will be consuming this data? Well, quite often using a web portal. They would log onto a web portal like this. It's highly secured. And then they're going to have access to their own reports. Maybe every person from each individual company they'll have an access to the sales reports, and when they log into the portal, they will only be able to see their own company's data. While, let's say, if I'm the owner of five companies, like the fri franchisee, when I go to the portal, I can see sales from my five individual locations. While the manager of each location opens the same report, but can only see his own location sales, and that's all controlled by security. How can we do that? Remember, we're using Fortune 2000 technology. It's really robust, it's really secure, it has a lot of functionality to tackle different reporting needs. That's how we do it. Now, when you come to this portal, and let's say you say financials, I wanna find my financial information. There's a lot of reports out of the box. If I click one of them, and let's say I wanna drill down into more details, in this case, I go to New York, I click on the bar, I can drill down into balance details, for instance, I click on it, I go to the balance details, I see the balance for New York, and, if, and I, I see all the monthly balances here. If I choose one particular account uh, segment, it narrows down to that particular account segment, and I see more details. Very intuitive, very fast. This data can be accessed anytime, anywhere. Now. When it comes to distribution, distributing information, as I mentioned, people can come to this portal using web and mobile devices. It will be highly secured and contextual to their own data, but they can also choose to receive the information in their inbox. 
they can subscribe to these views and tell, show me this every day, show me this every month, every week. And an email will come automatically into their inbox, they click it and they get the, the, the insight. So you need to come up with the analytics platform that will help each business decision maker to easily have access to data. If you don't make it easy, many of them are not going to be using. And we use Tableau because it has many features that make it easy and make it accessible. All right, let's go back to my PowerPoint to wrap it up. So what are the main benefits? Two main benefits of data self-analytics. The most important one, it empowers decision makers. How do we do it differently than the competitors? in the mid-market. First of all, because we use a data warehouse in analytics platform that is powered by leaders in the Gardner's Magic Quadrant. Again, we, we're getting the best of Fortune 2000. We make it easy, we make it affordable for you. That's one of the most important values we provide. Not only that, but there's more than 5,000 reports available out of the box. So it's not only easy, fast, it has a ton of reports as a starting point. So that's a great benefit. Second is, it reduces reporting labor by more than 80%. How we do it? Well, first of all, it's significantly easier and faster to build and modify reports. That's a big, big advantage. Second, because of the data warehouse, we can automate repetitive data manipulation. Error-free, automatic. Just let the computer do it for your team. And third, because we're using this uh, Fortune 2000 platform, there are many ways we can automate the distribution reports to all of your users using security context. Every person will receive in their own schedule only their own information, and it's all secured by this platform. You do not need people to control. Once you configure it, it becomes automatic. So those are the two main uh, benefits. Let me open the last poll, uh, which is how was this webinar? And I would appreciate if you give uh, your feedback because it can help us improve. So is it informative? Was the PowerPoint session too long? And if you met your expectations, and if you want to learn more about data self-analytics, please choose your options and click Submit. Ten more seconds. Don't forget to click Submit. Okay. Thank you very much. Just sharing the results. Uh, most people found, found informative. No one found the session, the PowerPoint session too long. Met expectations and want to learn more about the data self. Much appreciated. Folks, we have about a minute uh, to answer questions. Uh, sorry we didn't have a lot of time to answer questions, but uh, let me check if you have any questions. If you, if you, if you have questions, you can write in the GoToWebinar panel, uh, chatting panel. Let me see if I have questions here. You will have a bunch of questions. Let me address at least one of them. Question from Fred, how long does it take to deploy this solution? Fred, thanks for your question. Uh, when it comes to multi-company systems, uh, it depends how many companies you have, and it depends how the, the data must be consolidated. If it's a, a fairly straightforward process, maybe you have you know, five, even 10 companies, but the way we can consolidate is just merge them. There is no additional data manipulation. Typically in a month, we can get it up and running. Uh, but if you have, there's a lot of data massaging, we need to do a lot of tweaking the data warehouse, it can take much longer. So I recommend that we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation where we can learn more details about your multi-company set, uh, uh, setup, then we can let you know, uh, in your case, how long that would gonna take. Folks, unfortunately, we're running out of time. Uh, we got a lot of questions here. We're gonna be addressing them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. This webinar is being recorded, so we will be sharing the recording uh, uh, shortly with, with, you, with, with all of you. I really appreciate your time, your interest in our business. I, I hope you got a lot of value out of the session. 
Uh, you can share the recording with other people. And thank you very much. Hope you have a great Thursday. Thank you.